Hey everyone, Random Randy here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this extra scrubby exfoliating washcloth or dishcloth. It has enough texture to help clean pots and pans, but it is also soft enough to use on your skin. Here are the materials that you will need. You will need cotton yarn. In this case, I have some Lily Sugar and Cream on hand, and I also have some Premier Home Cotton, which is an 85% cotton, 15% polyester blend. And as you can see, this one is orange and white with varying depths of color to the orange throughout, as you could see in the cloth. The colors actually change throughout here, creating an almost striped effect. And I am going to be using the Cotton Poly Blend Premier Home in this tutorial because the blended fibers mean that the projects will, according to the wrapper, stay brighter, dry faster, and last longer. If you've ever used 100% cotton, you'll know that after a few hot washes, it tends to start to fuzz. Allegedly, this cotton poly blend does not do that. So, that takes care of the yarn, which is one of the most important things that you'll need. You will also need a crochet hook. In this case, I am using a four millimeter hook or a USG hook. I'm using a Susan Bates inline hook. That's just personal preference. You can use a boy hook, you can use another ergonomic hook, off-brand, whatever you're comfortable with or whatever you have on hand, doesn't really matter. You also need a tapestry needle for weaving in ends pair of scissors. I have these itty bitty little ones that I always keep in my crochet kit because it's a lot better than carrying around a giant set of shears when you have kids running around. And you will need a measuring tape. I will give you row estimates as far as count goes for how many rows I did, but your gauge may be slightly different than mine, so you're going to want to measure your cloth as you go to make sure it's the right size. So now that all of that is done, let's get started. First order of business is to find the end of your ball of yarn. And thankfully you didn't have to just see the five minutes worth of sorting through yarn barf in the middle of that ball that I had to deal with. To do this project, you will need to know how to chain single crochet and half double crochet. If you aren't quite sure how to do any of these stitches, I'm going to show you a few times as we go, and if you need some more time to practice, I do have a beginner tutorial video called Crochet Crash Course 101. It will teach you all of your basic stitches, a little bit about yarn, and tension. So I will link that in a card here if you need to go check it out. And otherwise, let's grab that hook and the yarn and get going. To start off, you're going to need to make a slip knot. To make a slip knot, I just wrap it around my fingers, pull it through the center here like so, and pull it through. Now you have a loop that you put on your hook, and you gently tug your yarn until it's snug against your hook. For this particular project, to make a square that is approximately 8 inches by 8 inches, we're going to start off with 30 chain stitches. To make a chain stitch, you take your yarn around the back of the hook to the front, that is called a yarn over. You yarn over and then pull the hook through the loop. You have one chain stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. So that's five chain stitches, and when you've performed them correctly, you can see it sort of looks like a braid almost. 
So go ahead and make the other 25 chain stitches and I will meet you once you have 30 of them complete. And now, as you can see, we have a starting chain that is approximately eight inches long. Yep, right on the eight. Now, we started with 30 chains, but since the first stitch of our next row is going to be a single crochet, we're going to chain one more, which will count as the turning chain. That one that you do at the end will not count as a stitch, but it will be important at the end of every row to ensure that you have straight edges. So you're now going to put your hook through the second chain from the hook. This will be your first stitch. You're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. So you have two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. That is a single crochet stitch. The next stitch is a half double crochet. You begin it the same way you would a double crochet, meaning you yarn over before you insert your hook into the stitch. Now poke through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop so now you have three. Yarn over once more and now you're going to go through all three of the loops that are on the hook. And now you have a single and a half double. So we'll go through that slow a few more times. Go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over for the half double, through, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over through all three stitches. So the next one is a single crochet. You're just going to go through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two loops, yarn over, go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. This is what it should be looking like. I'm gonna go through it one more time, then I'm going to speed through the rest of the row for you. Put your hook through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. There's your single crochet. Yarn over, go through the next stitch. Oh. Yep, there we go. Yarn over, pull up a loop so you have three. Yarn over and go through all three. So just continue repeating that until you get to the end of the row and I'll show you how we're going to turn. So now we are to the last two stitches of the first row. This next stitch will be a single crochet. And the last stitch should always be a half double crochet. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. So now we're looking at the back side of the row. We've chained one, so our first stitch, just like before, we're going to be repeating the same pattern. You're going to go into this space here, not the chain stitch that you just created, but the top of your first single crochet from the last row. You're going to go in this little space right here, underneath both loops that form the V on top that resembles a braid. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through both. That is your first single crochet. In your next stitch, you'll notice that there's a slightly bigger hole here. That's going to help you keep track of what stitch you're on if something happens or you lose count if you're a counter. Personally, I just do the pattern repeat in my head, single, 
half double, single, half double. But these spaces that are slightly bigger is where your half double crochets are going to go. So then as you can see, the next space is shorter. So that will be a single crochet. And the space after that is slightly bigger. So that will be a half double. One more time, single crochet goes in the short space and half double crochet goes in the larger next stitches space. So I will speed through to the end of this row and you're just going to continue as before by doing a chain one and turn and you will keep repeating that pattern until your washcloth is the size that you desire it. And we have reached the end of row two. We're on our last stitch, which will be a half double crochet. I'm going to go right under here and through all three. Now to get to the next row, you just chain one, turn, and start the process all over again. So pause the video here, take a little bit of time to get it done and I will meet you up once we are on the last row that will make it eight inches square or however big you decided you wanted your washcloth, dishcloth to be. And I will show you how to finish off with a little loop for hanging. And now you will notice a distinct color change in the yarn, but we're still going to finish it off the same way. So, the cloth has now reached eight inches and I'm just a few stitches from the end of this row. So let's finish it up together and I will show you how to make the little loop to hang it and then we can cut the yarn and tie everything in and be happy and finished. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches left and it's probably pretty much impossible for you to see with the black yarn but you should have the pattern completely down pat by now single crochet half double crochet single half double single half double so now that we have finished the last stitch of that row we are going to chain 10 right here in this corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten chains. And we are going to slip stitch it into this very same corner space to make the loop to hang it from. Just going to insert your hook right here in the space right between the second to last stitch and the very last stitch. You're just gonna put your hook through there, grab the yarn with a yarn over, pull it through. Now you are just going to rather than doing a yarn over and making a single crochet you're just going to go right through that other loop on the hook now you have a hanging loop and personal preference i like to also go into the next row down just do one more slip stitch to secure everything grab your scissors Cut the yarn. I like to leave a decent tail that's about four to six inches long. Cut the yarn. Take your hook and pull the yarn all the way through so it is nice and secure. And then just use your needle to weave in the ends however you generally do so. And your dishcloth will be complete. You should have 
two ends unless you used a multitude of yarns. If you were using scrap cotton, you might have more ends to weave in. But there you go. That is my version of a scrubby washcloth or dishcloth. And I hope this was helpful, and I hope you make many very, very easy washcloths to sell, to give away for gifts. These make excellent baby shower gifts. If you're not quite sure what to get, who wouldn't love something that isn't disposable, that can be reused over and over again? I wouldn't necessarily recommend something with the Stellina or the metallic in it like this though, that might be an irritant to baby skin. So if you stick with the plain cotton or a poly cotton blend, you're in business. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!